is a motion sensor, really a motion sensor, and are you getting what you're paying for? I'm gonna discuss three types of motion sensors with you today. I'm gonna to discuss the standard old PIR, I'm gonna discuss the Power G PIR, and I'm going to also discuss the new dual tech motion sensors, which um, just are absolutely phenomenal. So I'm gonna start with the best first. So this motion sensor here is a dual tech motion sensor. Meaning it, meaning it has two technologies. It has both infrared and it also has microwave. And when those two technologies come together, if it's making a picture, right, it takes the microwave picture and it takes the infrared picture and it overlays one over the other. If they are, you know, exact matches, then the motion sensor goes off. Why is this important? We had tons and tons of false positives with motion sensors in homes and corporations and businesses, particularly in commercial warehouses. Air handlers come on, those types of things will all set off motion sensors. We either had it happen to us with the old technology. Um, but if you look at how this particular sensor is installed, it's got a curve to it. The curve leans slightly away from the wall because motion sensors, which are not really motion sensors, they have beams that come out and they go down. When you break those, uh, those beams, um, that's what starts having it take a picture and it then triggers the motion sensor. If they're flat against the wall, if you have somebody that came in and they didn't, they didn't mount your motion sensor like this, the motion sensor's flat against the wall, you're missing half of the effectiveness of the motion sensor. I'm going to show you a video now of what happens if you crawl in front of a motion sensor. This motion sensor is set to a three minute delay. I'm gonna walk in front of it, you're gonna see the light go off. Typically, on wireless motion sensors, the lights do not go off because it wears down the battery quicker. They only do that whenever they're set to three minute programming. So when I walk in front of this camera, I mean, when I walk in front of the motion sensor, you're gonna see the little red light come off the top, okay? Now, it's actually mounted a little bit low. There's low ceilings in here. Now, I'm gonna come in. Let's let the red light turn off. Now I'm gonna come into the room like this, these are PIR motion sensors. If you notice, the red light did not go off. Why did the red light not go off? Well, there is a built-in flaw in these motion sensors, and it's why you need to be aware of what you're actually getting. So a PIR motion sensor, the P stands for pet immune, pet immune infrared. Typically, they're set somewhere between, you can actually adjust on some of the more expensive ones, you can adjust it to where, you know, you can have an 80 pound dog in your house walking around the floor and they don't go off. Well, it also creates a pet alley where a 250 pound man can crawl around your floor after getting in your window and go through your house and go through, through your, your things. So a pet immune motion sensor, it's infrared only. It is not a dual tech. Sets up your home for an invader or an intrusion. Now there's other ways to beat them. I'm not gonna talk about those. You can cover up, you can put blankets on, you can put all tight, you can put mylar bags on, things that will stop your heat image so those will still uh, not function. But we started off with the dual tech, which is by far the best. And they go one step down. Uh, this is a Power G infrared motion sensor. So the only real difference between the Power G and the Pet Immune motion sensor is that the Power G has a super long range. There's a high, high failure rate on a lot of security peripherals, door window sensors, um, uh, motion sensors. We've seen particularly the last couple of years as the technology has gotten better, the other companies, and I won't name a bunch of names, but the other companies are still using the old sensors, the old technology. The reason is it's cheap. It was uh, mass produced. You can get door sensors for about six bucks. Those motion sensors, the pet immune motion sensors, um, they're pretty inexpensive as well. Uh, to the dealer, they're probably anywhere between 19 and $21. You're probably going to pay to an average dealer somewhere between $60 and $100 per those motion sensors. Um, but if you're wanting your home to be safe and you're wanting to put in what is the best motion sensor and you're really not as concerned about, you know, 
cost, uh, the dual tech motion sensor should be somewhere between about $85 and $125. You can't beat them. They're almost impossible to bypass. Uh, the technology is superb, and you're just going to pay a little bit more. Um, protect your home, protect your family, protect your business. I promise you that uh, when you're buying something from a big box company, they want you to know as little as possible. Ask them. Ask them what the technology is. If you've got a salesman knocking on your door, ask them what the technology is. Is this a PIR motion sensor? And if it is, what technology is it? Um, if it's a power G motion sensor, ask them and ask them if it, is it a dual tech technology. Um, and the last one is, you know, ask for dual tech. You may not have the budget to spend a little bit more, but you can always add them later. If you just want to get a power G now, that's all, all you can afford. That's okay. Hope this helps. Uh, do us a favor, like and subscribe.